I, I always like to look at proof of concept, but also proof of history. Well, hey, 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 what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Rock Your Brand Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Boker, a serial entrepreneur on a mission to help you. This show is designed to teach you, to inspire you, to motivate you, to take massive action and build a future-proof business. So whether you're just starting out or taking your existing business to the next level, this is your home. Now, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's rock your brand. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Rock Your Brand Podcast. This is episode 941. And today, we are going to be talking about three reasons why a brand or a website will fail, or it has less chances of it succeeding. I'm gonna be covering those. There's actually one that is really important, and it's the first one that I look at to make sure that it checks out, because if it doesn't, well, then I'm not going to even worry about wasting my time or energy or money building out this brand. So that's what we're gonna be covering here. Now, this is from one of our coffee talks. If you wanna be part of our Take Action Morning Crew, that's where we hang out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I answer live Q&A there as well, Uh, you can go ahead and head on over to takeactioncrew.com, go ahead, takeactioncrew.com, go there, and uh, you'll actually see All of the past coffee talks, there's a really cool little player there, it's free, and uh, you're able to use that and go through and search anything that you have questions about, and it will literally go to that exact question or that topic that you want more information about. It'll go through all of the past coffee talks, so really, really useful. So make sure that you check that out. You'll also be on our Take Action Morning Crew list, and this way here I can send any uh, notifications or anything to let you know and kind of stay in the loop of what we're doing on these coffee talks. But that's what we're gonna be talking about here today is really what are the things that we need to pay attention to, and really these three are critical, and if you are able to look at these and really run through these three different items and kind of cross-check it, with the niche that you're considering, you're gonna have a lot better chance of succeeding. Now, this is also something that I did just before we did our live niche finder fast track workshop, which is all over with now. We already did it, it was awesome. A lot of people went through it. A lot of people were able to now validate and verify their niche, actually discover their niche. If you missed it and you wanna go through that, well, you're in luck because now it's an on-demand class and you can find that by heading on over to brandcreators.com forward slash niche. Again, that's brandcreators.com forward slash niche. And if you go there, and that's spelled N-I-C-H-E, and if you go there, uh, you will be able to register and go through that on-demand class. So guys, I'm gonna stop talking so we can get into it. So this way here, you know exactly what to look for when you are validating your niche. Enjoy. Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to jump into these three different areas. Now, let, let me ask you that, guys, this. Does anyone want to take a guess at what the number one, the number one thing that we need to look at when we are taking this niche? Now, I'm assuming that we've already had, that we already have a niche uh, that we're thinking about or niche, however you want to say it. I know some people are going to be watching this and go, no, Scott, it's niche. And some people will be saying, no, Scott, it's niche, whatever. Okay. So, Let me ask you, what do you think? Put it in the comments. What is the number one thing, the very first thing that we need to consider before we go any further? Before we go any further, what is that number one thing? So drop that in the comments. Even if you're watching this on the replay, please, please drop it in the comments. And uh, that way there we can kind of, we can see, we can start to tally these up. I'm just curious. Uh, Let's see here. Uh... Oh, and Melissa says, I'm stuck finding a niche. Well, Melissa, um, this is gonna help you right here today, but I would encourage you, okay, to definitely join us during this Niche Finder Fast Track Workshop, all right? That is going to help you. I promise you that. Um, Okay, good morning. What's up, coffee crew? Yes, I do have my coffee and I've got my glasses and 
I don't know. I'm still getting used to these things, guys. And I've been trying to be really, really strict on wearing them as much as possible. And um, it's just hard going from here to there, right? And I still feel a little bit like I'm looking through plate glass. But I'm going to give it a good old-fashioned college try. I can definitely see better. But I don't know if I have to see that good, to be honest with you. <laughs> All right. So uh, what's up, Salama? Uh, Kate says, good morning. Yes, on the glasses. Uh, Jason, what's a good traffic number for a locally focused site? Yeah, Jason, you and I had a hot seat session. Jason's in, in our Brand Creators Academy. Uh, and I think we went over this. And when I give you guys the hot seat, actually, I say you guys, anyone that's in Brand Creators Academy, that hot seat will be going out here probably in, an, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but when you're looking at local traffic, and so Jason has a, a kitchen business, high-end kitchen business, and he wants to get clients coming into him, which we can do a whole session on, on that. Um, but really, I don't care if you're getting 20 searches a month. I don't really care. Because number one, if we're looking at the search results on that one long tail keyword, I'm like, okay, well, it says it's getting 20 searches a month. It's probably more like 200, maybe even 500, or maybe it is only 20. But those 20 people that are searching are exactly who you're looking for. So I don't care about those numbers. And I think we talked about this, Jason. It's like, you just need to get out local content. That's it. Don't worry about looking at the numbers right now. You can probably put out 10 or 15 posts that are just content that's going to serve your area. Uh, and then from there, just start posting that stuff. I wouldn't even worry about digging into uh, Uber Suggest. If you're going outside of local, now we're going to get a little bit more, a little bit more precise. Um, and Jason, good morning to you. Uh, uh, Salma, proof of concept, others doing it. Okay, cool. So now we're starting to get into what, what would make a good niche or, or what is one thing if it's not going to check that box that we're not going to move forward. Salomon says proof of concept. Others are doing it. I like that. Jason says traffic opportunity. I like that. John says, good morning. Good morning, John. Uh, also John says looking for traffic. Yes. And, uh, Renee says, good morning, coffee crew. What's up? Okay. So, uh, Yes. We are definitely going to want to look at traffic, but that's not the number one thing. That's not the number one thing. The number one thing that we have to make sure before we do anything is we need to look at trends. We need to look at, is this a trend? Because if you're going to build something on a trend, well, why do they call it a trend? It's here today and gone tomorrow, or maybe it's here for three years and then it's gone. Imagine you putting all of your time and effort into something that's just a trend, right? Let's say it's one of those fad diets, right? Atkins diet. That was probably, I don't know, four or five, six years ago, maybe even more, 10 years ago. That was the diet. And if you look at a Google trend chart, you'll probably see it was huge. And then all of a sudden it dipped down. Now I'm not saying that it went totally away. But if you're banking your numbers on the peak and that peak is going to basically go down now, that could be a problem. Now, if you look at it and go, well, even if it drops, there's still going to be plenty of traffic and opportunity. But if it's a fad that's just going to disappear or that's going to go really, really like get really, really low, we don't want to base our decision on that. So I always look, I always like to look at proof of concept, but also proof of history. Okay. Now a, a great example of this, and I just started really looking deeper into doing this myself is like investing in dividend paying stocks. And there's this, um, there's this uh, site it's called sure dividends, I believe. And what he does is he looks at dividend paying stocks that have been paying dividends for 25 plus years or more. And there's some that are 50 years. And so what he's looking at is he's not looking at riding the trend of Tesla, maybe, which I don't think Tesla's a trend, but you know what I'm saying, right? It's a, it's a huge peak. It's a gamble, right? Uber, I'm going to go ahead and bet on Uber before Uber was who they are. It's a risk. It's a gamble, right? If it hits, great. But how many of those didn't hit, right? So it's a trend or it's something that's just hyped right now. Give you another example, Clubhouse. Clubhouse is the newest app that everyone's downloading. Everybody's jumping on. 
Is that going to be here? And then you're going to, you're going to put all the time and effort into it. It's going to be here now. And then it's going to go away. And then all of a sudden you built like all of this stuff on this platform, or let's say that you're going to teach people how to use clubhouse. And then all of a sudden clubhouse goes away. Look at Periscope. There's a perfect example. Periscope. If you guys still remember Periscope by Twitter was huge. It was, it was well, it was booming. Then all of a sudden, Facebook came in, added their live feature, Instagram, their live feature, and then all of a sudden, Periscope, bye-bye. What if you bank all of your all of your information that you were that maybe you were teaching people how to use Periscope because you've seen this big trend? And then all of a sudden, bam, it's gone. Right. So we don't want to do that. And what we want to do is we want to look at historical data. Okay. And the way that we can do that is by using a tool called Google Trends. All right. I'm going to pull up my screen here and I'm going to show you guys an example. We'll play a little bit here. All right. We'll, we'll play a little bit with some, with some, uh, you know, different types of, uh, niches, but let me ask you guys this as well. Okay. Are there any niches that you want me to do a Google trend on? I'll do it here live with you right now. If you're here live, if you're not here live, drop it in the comments, drop in a, a niche that you would want to look and see if it's a trend or if it's something worth investing time and energy into. This will also help me because when I do the niche finder fast track workshop, I'm going to be doing random niches. We're going to be drilling down into random niches. And I would love for you to give me some ideas of ones that you want me to incorporate in that workshop. So go ahead, drop them in the comments. Let me know. All right. So, oh, and Salamis says evergreen niches, not fads like fidget spinners. Uh, oh, Juan says toys. Okay. Let's get a little bit more specific with toys though. Okay. With types of toys. Um, that's where I would go with that. So let's go ahead and, uh, oh, Ruth, good morning. Uh, oh, Melissa. Cool. That's a good one. RV travel accessories. Nice. Uh, okay. All right. So let, let's do this. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and share. Uh, okay. Can you guys see that? Okay. Like, give me a yes or a no. Oh, I like this. You guys are dropping in some nice, nice stuff here. I might use some of these in the upcoming workshop, by the way, um, the niche finder fast track workshop. And if you want to enroll in that, head on over to brandcreators.com forward slash NFW dash enroll. And you'll be able to do that. If you're watching this after January 20th, you can still go there because we will have that available um, later. So you can go ahead and uh, and go through that workshop. It just won't be live. It'll be recorded. All right, cool. Here we go. Awesome. Jason says, yes, I can see. Uh-oh, I think I lost my stream. Wait a minute here. Let's go back. What happened? All right, bear with me, bear with me. A little computer hiccup, hiccup here. All right, let's see here. I don't know what happened to my screen. It stopped sharing there for a minute. So you guys still see me okay? Thumbs up. Let's see. It looks like my uh, Google Trends is still up. Okay, here we go. All right. I think I'm back. I think I'm back. See you, not your screen. Okay, now you should see the screen. Okay, here we go. All right. So, of course, I had to bring up bass fishing. So, what's really cool is when you when you go into Google Trends, just, su just search for Google Trends or trends.google.com, you'll come to this page. Okay? Now, what I always like to do is I like to look at the five years. That gives me good data, right? And then I can kind of comb through here. Now, look at this. Bass fishing, basically the same every year. And actually, this year, it's a little bit higher. Why, why do you think bass fishing would be a little bit higher this year? Drop that in the comments as well. I'm curious if you are thinking the same thing that I am thinking. Drop that in the comments. Uh, it's a little bit higher than it's been in years. Okay, It peaked in June. Wonder why. Think about that. But with that being said, this here is about the same every single year. Every single year. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, but it never flatlines. Okay. The other cool thing with this, I can look and see what are the most popular areas for people searching for this. I can also look at related quarries, bass fishing lakes near me, 
Um, what is that? Huck fishing, best bass fishing lakes near me, best bass fishing spots near me, uh, good bass fishing spots near me. Uh, okay. So you can, you get what I'm doing here, right? Now, the other thing I can do is I can go here and say, okay, what has it been in the past 12 months? And then it'll give me this view. So it shows me here, January, that was last year. And now we're going to start, we're going to start going up here soon, right? Cause we're starting to get into bass fishing season, peak season. And then you can see it drops, but it doesn't drop all the way down. So would I, would I spend time building out something in bass fishing? Absolutely. Now check this out. If I go here, I'm going to get other terms. Check this out. Striped bass fishing. I click on that. Check this out. It's pretty much the same little, a little bit up and down, but let's go five years. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. I mean, it's the same. Now this pretty much had a little bit of a peak here in 19 for some reason. And then here it's about the same all the way across. Okay. But again, it gave me a nut. Now I niched down inside of bass fishing. I went from bass fishing to striped bass fishing, right? And there's probably other terms that we can do. Now this would be a good blog content, those types of things. All right. So, uh, let me do another one here. Let me do keto diet. And let's look at the last five years. Check that out. So back here in 2016, just nothing really, just maybe being talked about a little bit. And then all of a sudden, boom, we're getting these big spikes. But check this out. It's going down. It's going down. It's going down. And it's, it's going down. Okay. A little bit up here but it's pretty much down. Let's look at the last year, past 12 months. Check this out, right? It's coming up a little bit, but it's been down. Now, if I go here, I can go actually go 2004 to present. Check this out. See, we had that giant spike. So this research that I'm doing right now is really, really important in the very beginning because we're not going to do anything else if we look at this and we're like, no, man, that thing is terrible. Check this out. I'll give you a really good example. Uh, is that right? Fidget spinner. That's how you spell that, isn't it? Yeah. Check that out. <laughs> now that's a good example. Let's go five years. That'll make it compress it a little bit. Look at here we are. And then let's just go, uh, let's see past 12 months. Yeah. Look, right. That we had one little spike here for some reason. Right. So. Yes, I, this would not be a market I would want to go into, right? Let's look at, um, let's look at this. Let's do this quick. Um, let's see. Well, actually you guys had some, let, let me go ahead and I'll, I'll play with what you guys are going to give me. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Yes. Activity COVID. That's what Jason said. That's the reason for the spike for bass fishing. Yes. Uh, more free time for hobby. Yes. Um, Let's see. Uh, yes, people um, were social distancing. Yes, due to lockdown. Um, slight rise in interest in pastimes. Yes. Uh, Derek says, I am blurry. I think everyone else said that I am clear. Just give me a thumbs up if I'm clear. Uh, okay, let me let me take, uh, let's see here. STEM toys. That's an interesting one. So let's do this. STEM toys. Okay. This is past 12 months. Let's go five years. Here we are. Okay. So does this look like a trend that is here and is going to probably fade away? No. Okay. And here's why. If I go all the way back here, you can see like, yes, during, I mean, this is like off season. And then all of a sudden, what's this? This is obviously going to be September, October, November, December, and then January it drops and then it starts to come back a little bit, but you have these huge spikes, December, November, uh, let's see, December, huge spikes. Okay. In there, but those spikes don't bother me because it's pretty consistent throughout here. These, these are just giant spikes because of that time of year. So it's a little bit seasonality, but there's other things we can probably do in the educational, um, side of things versus just STEM toys, right? So the other thing to do here is if I go here, uh, 
okay, organic chemistry for babies. Um, so we can get other ideas doing that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to dive too deep into that, but let's do this here. Let's go and say past or 2004 to present. Okay. So it probably just started to get introduced in here. Right. And then now look at this. If we look at this, like at this view, it's going up. Yes. This is what it's telling us. It's predicted to do, but this is going up again, just like it did here. And then it will drop again, but look at this. It's definitely trending up. I like this. Okay. I look at this, uh, science, technology, engineers. Okay. That's the, that's obviously what it stands for child topic. Then we have best STEM toys, uh, STEM kids, toys, STEM toys for kids, girls, STEM toys. Okay. So all that stuff. So STEM toys, I can even go a little bit deeper for boys. Let's see what happens here. Okay. Uh, let's go. Let's see. Past five years. Here we go. Right. So it's pretty consistent. Okay. What about for girls? Probably going to be the same or similar. A little bit more active, but yeah. Okay. That, that was a good one. I like that. Okay. So let's go back. What else we got? Uh, let's see. We had RV travels, uh, or travel accessories. So why don't we just do RV travel? I bet you right now you're going to see a huge spike. That market is going crazy. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's up here, but look at this. Look at this. And this is great. Past five years, this is nice and steady, nice and steady. Look at little dip, right? Comes back up. And now all of a sudden here, why, why again, are we in here? The pandemic, right? People are traveling more. They're trying to get away or, you know, get out of uh, where they're staying right now. And they want to vacation, but they can't vacation in a hotel or a resort as much as they can just RV traveling. So it's picked up a little bit of steam, but does this make me say this is a trend? No, it's been good all the way back here. So this here would meet my next, okay, let's go ahead and see what the next thing is, which we haven't even talked about yet. Okay. This is fun. I like doing this again. This is exactly what we're going to be doing just deeper in, in various niches. We're going to be doing this in the niche finder, uh, fast track workshop. If you are interested in attending, make sure that you get registered before January 20th. If you're watching this after January 20th, you can still go to the link and you can go through the workshop. All right. Um, this is exactly what we're going to be doing. I mean, this is just, we're scratching the surface, but this is what we're going to be doing. Okay. Digging in and finding these different markets like this. All right. Uh, and let me do one more. Let's see. Oh, I spelled fidget rent spinners wrong. Didn't I? It's yeah. Let, let's see if we spell it right. <laughs> what happens? Uh, let's see. I'm curious on that if it made a difference. Nah, not really. It, it knew enough. But you can see that right there. Look at boom, nothing. Okay. This is the past five years. Look at bam, gone. So if you built your business off of a fidget spinner, you know, uh, I mean, come on. Now, if you did something, now the fidget spinner could be used as a device for, uh, you know, for certain conditions, if you wanted to use those conditions as the main niche, that's fine. A fidget spinner is just a device that helps you. Right. Um, so that's where I would go with that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so this here, uh, buying scratch off world maps. I think that's interesting, but what I would say there is that's a product we want to look at the market. So if someone's traveling, RV traveling, they would probably be interested in buying a scratch off world map, correct? So we want to look at the niche and then this here would just be something that's built off of that niche. Great idea though. Uh, van conversions. Oh, I like that. But again, that's kind of like traveling, but let's just try that. So van conversions. Let's see. This is the path. So it's pretty consistent. Uh, and there's probably a better search for that. Uh, DIY van conversions. See, custom van conversions, sprinter vans. We can get even more dialed in here. Uh, DIY van conversions. Let's try that. Let's try uh, DIY van conversions. Let's try that. 
So it's it's pretty steady. I mean, they've been people have been doing that for a long time. Let's even go back further. Yeah, check that out. It started becoming known in here, 2010. So for the past 10, 11 years, it's been it's been still happening. So it's not a bad market. It's a, it's a good example. Okay. Uh, and let's see here. Do do do. See if we got anything else. Oh, Jason wants to know what does the scale mean? Is thirty low? Well, it yeah, it depends on what you're gauging it off of. Obviously, you want it higher, but like a hundred is kind of like all the way up there, right? It's like we've you know it's got like peak performance there. Um, and as far as thirty, that's going to be like you know a third in a sense, or a little less than a third. Uh, but 30 to me is still steady, right? So if we look at, so see this here, it never really reached the hundred. We got, these are drops completely. Let, let's go back here though. So we can see a little bit more. Let's go past 12, right? So if we look and let's not do, let's just do RV travel. Let's see what we get. Yeah, here we go. So see, like, so if we're looking at it like month to month, right? Like 34, uh, 48, 50, 41. And then we have these spikes that go up to 93 and this here hit a hundred. This actually did hit a hundred, right? And then boom, it starts to drop. I just don't want to see it where it's going to flatline. And that could be flatlining at 10 or 20. Um, 30 is still okay with me. But again, I'm not looking at this as like, okay, what's the 30 mean? What does the 70 mean? I would then take it to the next stage, which is traffic. Okay. So this here just has to pass. I just have to see that I'm not, I'm not seeing a spike. And then all of a sudden it's just been downhills ever since. And we can just see a trend going down, 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 kind of like the Atkins diet or keto, something like that would be, it's a, it's going to pretty much taper and probably eventually taper to really, really low numbers. Now those low numbers in that type of market might be big enough. I don't know. It wouldn't be something that I would want to probably build a business off of or a brand of, uh, off of. Um, so yeah, so this here, I like, I like this a lot because it shows, and then I would go back here and I'd go past five years. And so the next part of this, and I'm not going to have time to go through all of this, but the next thing would be then let's validate the traffic right? Let's go on something like Uber suggest. Let's start exploring other sites that are already, uh, you know, proven that the, uh, that this market has traffic. So I'm going to start looking at traffic numbers. What's my potential for traffic. All right. And then the next thing, okay. Is going to be monetization. So then I'm going to start looking at, okay, I validated that it's not a trend and that it's, it's basically steady. And it has been for the last five years. The next thing I'm going to do is validate that there's traffic out there that I can get in front of people, okay, um, on a regular basis with content. And then the last thing is going to be, does it check the final box, which is monetization, you know, and there's a variety of different things that we can look at for monetization. You know, are there digital products selling? Are there accessories selling? Are there physical products selling? Uh, are there um, ads being run on websites, right? Are there uh, digital products on ClickBank? Are there uh, products being sold on Etsy? Are there merch? Is there merchandise? You know, like I, I'll give you an example. So for RV travel, people wouldn't really think about merch, but merch would be really good for people that are gampers, right? That's another term for people that are out there, you know, traveling and doing the gamping thing. Um, and then there's RV style lifestyle. So people that are proud of being RV lifestyle, they're going to have, you know, fun shirts, right? And then those shirts could be, another side of the business. So I'm going to look at that stuff. I'm going to look at Etsy. I'm going to look at Teespring. I'm going to look at all of those things to validate that there's money being made in that market. And what is the potential for me to add these other products down the line? Not all at once. All right. So hopefully this has helped you guys. So let me go ahead and get rid of that. And if you guys have any questions on this, let me know. But uh, I am uh, always looking at the, the trend on Google first. I'm just looking at the historical data as far as what is the interest around this niche and what is it for the last five years? And I'll even go back to 2004 if there's any data there. All right. Uh, and it says, Derek says, you still are blurry, but I can hear you clearly. That's, that's interesting. I wonder if anybody else is, um, is seeing that. Uh, let's see. 
Salama, would you, uh, would you have to verify your exact method of monetization being done by others? Yes, we're going to do that for sure. So we're going to basically find some websites that are already uh, building out traffic, you know, content for traffic that are already selling products or already not even selling their own products, but leading people to other products that are being sold in, in the niche, right? So yes, we don't want to find them just having one-off product. That's just bringing in all of the revenue. I want to see monetization happening all over their site. I want to see maybe ads running from ad networks. I want to be able to see uh, maybe a digital product being sold by them or by someone else that they're promoting. I want to see physical products potentially being sold. I want to see Etsy sales. Maybe they have things they're selling on eBay. I'm going to learn what is selling by someone else already selling it. I know that sounds like, why would you do that if someone else is already doing it? Because if there's enough traffic, then we just need a small portion of that traffic and then we can start selling things. But the cool thing is, is as we start to build our authority in this niche, we're able to start ranking for more competitive keywords. And then we're starting to get more of the traffic that's there as a potential. All right. So that's kind of the whole thing in a nutshell, guys, right? There's those three things that if you do not have those three things, okay, checked off there. I mean, it's kind of high level. Obviously we'd want to dig in and we want to see different traffic sources. We want to look at other websites, look at the keywords they're ranking for. What's the potential for me to create content? Um, is there anybody on YouTube doing this? Is there opportunity there? Maybe, um, is there Pinterest opportunity? All of those things are what you're going to want to validate going through this process. But the big three is really the trend, the traffic and monetization. Those are, those are it. Right. And if you don't have those, like if you have, let's say that you do have the, you know, the, you've checked out the trend and you're like, yeah, checks. Cool. And then you go, but the traffic, it's going to be really hard to get traffic. And I'm not really going to be able to create my own content on this topic because it's very competitive maybe. And there's no, there's no sub niche. So then I would back out of there. Or maybe we get all the way through the traffic uh, stage and we're like, yes, we can get traffic, but there's really hardly anything selling. What, what would you sell? What, you know, what other thing would you sell besides this one thing or this one product? So that's why we need to go through this process. All right. Well, there you have it. Hopefully now you have those three in your back pocket so you can cross check any brand, any niche that you're considering on building or expanding or growing. Because I'm telling you right now, if you go through and just those three, it's going to save you a lot of headaches later. All right. Now I did mention inside of that coffee talk that we did a live niche finder fast track workshop. If you are struggling with either finding your niche or validating your niche that I would encourage you to go through that on-demand class. And you can find that by heading over to brandcreators.com forward slash niche, N-I-C-H-E. And uh, that will take you to the registration page, which you can go through that thing right now in your own time at your own pace. And uh, it's going to be under, just under three hours of your time. There's also a bonus niche drill down where we did that again live for our initial class and you get that absolutely free as uh, attending the Niche Finder Fast Track Workshop. So if you are struggling with just figuring out is your niche even worth it or just discovering a new niche and validating it, definitely go through that workshop. It's gonna help you tremendously. All right, guys, so that's it. That's gonna wrap it up. As always, remember, I'm here for you, I believe in you, and I am rooting for you but you have to, you have to, come on, say it with me, say it loud, say it proud, take action. Have an awesome, amazing day, and I'll see you right back here on the next episode. Now let's rock your brand.